Good evening and uh, welcome to the webinar on the theme uh, that you see on the screen, Preparing God's People for Church Return in Person. I think in that theme, uh, every word is important, but I want to highlight this evening for the rest of the time, uh, the word uh, preparing. We all know, the whole world knows, and our community, our faith communities, our local communities, the entire nation, we all know that uh, the last year has been more spiritually, emotionally, mentally, and physically a taxing year than ever before. Everybody talks about that, how people have been uh, affected spiritually, mentally, emotionally, and physically. And for church people, when we are getting ready, and especially the First United Methodist Church faith community, uh, how can we prepare ourselves to return to church in person? Almost after 50 weeks, I believe, we will be returning to our beautiful sanctuary on February 21st not this Sunday, but the following Sunday. And um, all of our efforts um, are underway. And uh, we have been communicating about uh, this plan for quite some time through our social media, through um, the Methodist Messenger, uh, the February Methodist Messenger, our monthly bulletin has all the information about uh, this plan. You know, I've been thinking about uh, what should I say in my introduction? What is the purpose of this webinar? Again, the word uh, prepare. Uh, a couple of months ago, we had a season of Advent. And Advent is all about preparations, right? Uh, we were preparing to celebrate the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I can't believe that... Um, Exactly a week from today will be Ash Wednesday. And we will begin another church great tradition called the Lent. Again, we will be preparing ourselves for 40 days and six weeks to celebrate, to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So we prepared ourselves to celebrate the Christmas of last year. And we will be preparing ourselves to celebrate the Easter of this year. Very similar, after 50 weeks, 50 Sundays, we will be returning to our church. And that is something to be celebrated. But before we celebrate that special experience, I think we need to prepare ourselves and uh, that is, that is the purpose of this uh, webinar. Our church is blessed to have a wonderful online worship team that I have been working with the last uh, uh, 10 plus months. And uh, as a team, when we made the decision, we will return to our sanctuary, beautiful sanctuary. Um, on 21st of February, we all agreed that we need to be preparing our people uh, to return with meaning, to celebrate this wonderful uh, opportunity, to celebrate uh, enthusiastically, to celebrate this uh, experience uh, very meaningfully. So that is the whole uh, purpose of uh, this webinar this evening. 
And um, our church is blessed to have some wonderful, gifted, and dedicated, and passionate leaders and staff members. And this evening, uh, I have invited, and I'm joined by um, two of um, the great members of our church. And um, I'm very grateful to Julie Bryson and Pat uh, Shapiro. And Julie, by profession, is a clinical psychologist working with um, Advocate Aurora Healthcare System. And uh, I thought that Julie can help us. And uh, more than Julie, I know as a clinical psychologist, she's a very, very active member of her church for, for years, maybe decades. And uh, she's a lay servant and lay preacher of her church, one of the lay preachers of her church. And uh, she provides, um, you know, within my limited experience in our church, she provides a strong spiritual leadership. And she has been with um, Advocate uh, Aurora Healthcare System for about 21 years. And we praise God for such um, uh, lay leaders in our church. Pat Shapiro um, is on our staff. And um, I believe that this is the 25 years of uh, being part of our church staff. Um, uh, she's working uh, part-time with Advocate uh, Aurora Healthcare System and part-time with our church. And uh, she has been very, very resourceful to our congregation in many ways. And uh, she has worked with... Uh, Aurora for 44 years and with our church about 25 plus years and her title um, in our church as a staff is she's a faith community nurse and also known as uh, people know you know parish nurse um, that, that's uh, that used to be the the technical title but now the title has changed she is a faith community nurse a medical person I thought uh, I can provide spiritual leadership as a pastor, but at the same time, um, our mental and emotional health and physical health are to be uh, well prepared because we have been uh, affected greatly uh, in the different uh, aspects of our personality. And that is why I have invited um, Nurse Pat, we call her all the time. And Julie, um, one of our church leaders, and also a clinical psychologist, uh, to come and share with uh, with thoughts. To start with, we'll begin with Julie, and then Pat, and then I will close with uh, devotion. Um, again, uh, focusing on the word uh, preparing or prepare, and then we'll close uh, with a word of prayer. So, thank you all of you um, who are joining this webinar this evening. And we are very grateful for our church, our faith community. We are very grateful for our church missions and ministries. And this great opportunity of learning together so that we will be well prepared to return to the temple of God, to God's sanctuary, to worship God once again in person. The last one year, the worship experience has been great uh, through online and other um, social media. So once again, uh, welcome to um, Julie and welcome to Pat and welcome to all of you. If you are joining from uh, the district and other uh, places, a special welcome uh, to you as well. Um, so over to uh, Julie. All right. Thank you, Pastor Sam, for that introduction, and thank you for inviting me to participate this evening. Thank you to all of you who are, are joining. I'm glad that you're here. So the, uh, this part of the presentation I've titled Growth from Crisis, and I've taken the, the bullet points for the slides from a, um, a pretty robust literature in the psychological field about growth after trauma. And when we, I'm going to review that tonight and also try to integrate that with some elements of faith. So um, please forgive me if it looks like I'm looking away from the camera. I am checking my notes. So um, we'll go through this. There'll be time for questions and comments at the end. All right. Next slide, please. 
So our lives are colored by and changed by many of our lived experiences. Each one of us will come through this pandemic changed. We might not know fully how yet. Some changes might be practical. Some, of, some people may be dealing with a loss of a job, a gross change in income, more financial stress. Some may be dealing with new health issues if there's any so of the so-called COVID long haulers out there to know that, that, that life has changed in terms of breathing or strength, energy. Some may be grieving the loss of a loved one because of the virus. There, there should be other kinds of changes as well. And we're gonna be talking about some of those tonight. We all know that the pandemic and much of its effects was thrust upon us. We had no control over its arrival. We had no control over the business closings and the other shutdowns. So I think it's wise at this point to intentionally seek to counterbalance feeling out of control with a mindfulness of what we can impact, to take charge of the direction and nature of some of the changes in our lives as we go forward. It is important to involve God in this process, to seek out and pay attention to God's wisdom and word for our lives in the areas following. Please note as we proceed that I'll be giving some examples for most of the items that uh, I'll be talking about. They are not meant to be exhaustive, nor are they necessarily meant for you to adopt. Each one will find their own understandings and visions and the conclusions will likely be evolving over the next months. As you ponder these things, as we begin to meet together again in worship, as we listen for the voice of God in our midst. All right, next slide. So one of the things that research suggests has been helpful for those emerging from a trauma or crisis is to find work through and assign a sense of meaning about what has occurred. A meaning that resonates with what's important to you. The meaning might not answer the question of why, but reflect something that was learned. Meaning might come from identifying opportunities that were afforded during the past year. For instance, I wouldn't have chosen to go through a pandemic, but it gave me an opportunity to and then you name it, to get to know some neighbors differently, spend more time with scripture, identify my needs versus my wants. So there's opportunities that I might not have had otherwise. I suspect that the meaning you make of the past year will also reflect your beliefs about or, or your experience of God. There may be new meaning, for instance, to thoughts of God as strength, healer, Listener, rock. Next slide, please. So coming out of a crisis or a trauma, there's often a development of a new appreciation for life. And in addition to our triumphant lady pictured on the slide, I also envision here, I remember the story of the Exodus. And after coming through the sea that God had parted, and the Israelites having escaped the Egyptians. There's Moses and Miriam singing rather joyfully, triumphantly. Or the psalmist from the 126th. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dream. Then our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongues with shouts of joy. We have missed a number of things that we might have taken for granted. I think we were all, we will all cherish a hug, the sharing of a meal, gathering for worship. We'll appreciate seeing people's full faces, again, their smiles. Whatever we've been cut off from, how grateful we will be when we return to those things. There'll be a zest for life and recognition of its preciousness. To live without fear of becoming gravely ill will be a great gift. How will we seek to be intentional about keeping those attitudes of appreciation and gratitude to God going into the future? And next. The discovery of a newfound sense of strength. 
what or perhaps who has gotten you through this past year? How did you arrive at this point? How did you persevere? Is there a or a number of newly realized or newly developed strengths that you can claim in yourself? It might be every day putting one foot in front of the other. Maybe developing creativity and keeping the family occupied or a deepened prayer life. A new living into the knowledge that God's strength is sufficient for our weakness. A little bit different spin on strength. Was there a new skill that you developed? I know for me, I've learned more about computer technology than I'd ever thought I'd need to know. Hmm. How might we decide to utilize those strengths in the coming months and years? Just a note that in the fourth chapter of Ephesians, we're reminded that our strengths or talents are gifts of grace that are given for the building up of the body of Christ. In other words, to be used in the service of others. And more on this later. Next slide, please. I would be surprised if the pandemic hasn't shaken some ideas about ourselves and life that we might not have even been aware that we held. For example, things like a pandemic won't ever happen here now. A big one for a number of people has been having a sense of control shattered. That I don't have as much control as I thought I had of big areas of my life. I can't control some really important things in my life. Or our level of self-sufficiency. I really do need others. I need God more or differently than I thought before. So when those underlying thoughts are revealed and challenged and they no longer hold, there's opportunity, need really, for developing new understandings. First about yourself. How might you think about yourself different? Have any priorities changed? What have you learned about yourself, positive or negative? And how does that impact your understanding of yourself and your identity? Some people have discovered, for instance, that living at a different pace with fewer commitments, much less running around really fits them better. And how might, we, how might we incorporate those strengths we talked about before into a new understanding or self-concept? A new understanding about the world. For example, we can develop a new sense of neighbor given our shared worldwide experience. Or reflect on the world as a place in which life as we know it can change quickly. And again, having no control over those things. How do we live with that knowledge that our impact only goes so far? How does this affect our faith, our trust, our resting in God? I think some might also argue that we have seen the best and the worst of people over this past year. How might the knowledge that this is the world we live in affect your choices for interacting with it, where you might seek to make a difference? To where might God be calling you? Different understandings about how we relate to one another. How might that be different? How do we connect with each other differently? How do we express our revived appreciation for others? Might we engage with more mindfulness, perhaps, of the treasure found in and with these others? How will the knowledge that each one of us has persevered through the challenges of limited social contact, losses and scarcity affect how we approach one another, including the stranger, perhaps with more kindness and understanding? Any new thoughts about what kind of future we might have? Again, some possibilities living with uncertainty Increase trust in God in the face of this uncertainty. Making lifestyle changes long-term. 
preparedness for potential other crises, the importance of finding ways to work together. And next slide, please. Moving into a new focus on helping others. I think for, for, for us uh, in this faith community, in the world of faith, it is a renewed focus on helping others, which we know we're called to do as the body of Christ. We know that contemplation and service complement each other. And some of us over this past year may feel out of kilter, having had perhaps too much time to ourselves or finding that the focus on ourselves, like when we're in survival mode, even though that was necessary, is really unsatisfying in the long run. And so we become eager for balancing the self-focus with a broader vision that will allow us to use our strengths and our learnings for other people. I'm also mindful that many times our experiences lead us to become more compassionate Colossians, we're reminded, talks about clothing ourselves with compassion. We have a better idea of what it's like to live with a certain level of vulnerability, perhaps to have job loss. And these things can contribute to a new level of understanding and empathy for others. One of the things I've heard repeatedly from people is that they miss the volunteer work that they used to do when those formal opportunities shut down. Although a lot of people found other ways to tend to others, even though differently, I believe there's an eagerness to again embody the ministries of our church as we once did and likely develop new ones as people's needs have changed. The church here can help with offer opportunities to channel these desires as we listen together to where God is leading and calling us. And next slide, please. And so undergirding much of what I've been talking about is, of course, spiritual growth. Separating from the rest of these things really is artificial. For the meanings we make of our experience and our new understandings are interlaced with notions about God and how we live our relationship with God. How has your relationship with God changed? A more fervent prayer life? A strengthening of trust? A letting go of self-sufficiency and leaning more into God, depending more solidly on God. Finding that the Psalms or other scripture passages come to life differently when read through the lens of the challenges of the pandemic. Have you needed to work through anger with God? What have you learned of God's companionship over these months of isolation? How will worship be different for you because of this growth? And next slide. So before questions or comments, I just wanna uh, close by saying, as we prepare to enter the sanctuary and join with others for worship, I think that the church, this body of Christ in this time and this place can provide a space for continuing to work through these questions for developing the new understandings and commitments I've talked about and where those new things might be lived out for the sake of the world. So I thank you for your attention. Again, if there's questions or comments, uh, Pastor Sam tells me there's a chat, uh, is it a chat box or Q and A that they can put things in? Yeah, sure. Let's take um, a, a moment. If you have any question for Julie, I really appreciate great uh, wisdom that Julie has uh, brought um, to our table uh, as we prepare ourselves. So um, you are welcome if you have any question related to um, preparing ourselves um, before we move into the sanctuary for a time of worship in person. Uh, you may please uh, put your thought or a question in the Q&A uh, box. You are welcome. Maybe we'll we'll move on and um, uh, with uh, Pat, and you are welcome. You know, we will take some other. Uh, we'll take time before we end this um, webinar. 
um, then Julie will be with us. Um, so um, if that's okay with Julie, um, they, they, you, you are welcome to put your question um, anytime in the Q&A box and uh, I'll be able to share, this, sh share those questions with Julie um, as we um, listen to uh, Pat. Pat? Okay, thank you. Good evening and thank you for joining this webinar. Um, I'm going to start with some scripture, but before I do that, let's just take a few moments to take some deep breaths. Let's breathe in through our nose and then whistle the air out through your mouth. And I'm gonna start with some scripture from Jeremiah, chapter 33, verse six. Nevertheless, I will bring health and healing. I will heal my people and let them enjoy abundant peace and security. Now I realize that all of us are anxious to return to a quote unquote normal life. Mm -hmm. I, I admit sometimes I have to like pinch myself and say, oh, yeah, that's right. There's a pandemic going on. You know, you think about, oh, I'm going to go do this. Oh, wait a minute. There's a pandemic. I'm not going to do that. Um, it's been a long year. There's been many challenges throughout the year. Um, the fact is, though, that we will all experience several new normals on the road to conquering COVID-19. Life will change, but it will change slowly. But we've come this far, um, so we must persevere and avoid the temptation of drifting from the safety standards. So with regards to returning to worship in person in the sanctuary, in that preparation, it's very important um, to understand the expectations for attendance. And those are some of the things I'm going to focus on tonight. Those, um, so that you're, you're well prepared to know what's expected for when you return. Um, so the very first step for those who will be attending is to seriously, and I underscore that seriously, uh, review the screening questions which will be located at the entrances on the tripods. So that will be by the elevator and the main entrance of the church. Any of you who have been to a physician's office um, of late know those screening questions, asking about your, your health and symptoms and people that you live with and have been in contact with. But these are things to be seriously considered. And at any you know, point of that screening, if you feel that you have a concern that you're not well or that you may have been exposed, please do not enter the sanctuary, the church. Um, it's also important that um, you realize that we will not be entering the church through the parking lot doors. We'll be coming in through the elevator and the main entrance to the church. Now, second, um, the single most important step for infection prevention is good hand washing. And I hope that you're all being persistent um, with that. And um, I'm sure you have a lot of dry hands and that you're using lotion as needed. Um, when soap and water is not available, hand sanitizer is the best alternative. So therefore, um, people who attend will be asked to use the hand sanitizers that are located in the dispensers before you would enter into the sanctuary. Of course, masks covering both your nose and your mouth will be required at all times. We do have a limited supply um, available at the church if you should happen to forget your mask. But remember, even if you are fully vaccinated, you could still spread COVID-19. 
you yourself will not become ill from the virus, but you could spread it to someone else. So masking is definitely um, required. Um, we will have restrooms that are located by the gathering room open and available uh, for necessity. Um, I encourage you to use your, your own washroom at home before you leave for the church. And access to other parts of the building will not be available. So we'll be coming in, we'll be um, entering the sanctuary, um, going to other parts within the church is not allowed. Um, of course, social distancing of at least six feet will be maintained at all times. Um, so it will be extremely important that you follow the directions of the ushers. Those who attend will be asked to leave church promptly after the service and return to your vehicles without delay. So um, no socialization as, as we all like to do. <laughs> we all like to do. And I, I'm, a, I'm a little bit concerned about this social distancing in public. I've, I've noticed that a lot of the stores that I go to that used to have X's on the floor um, to keep people spaced, those, that tape is gone for whatever reason. But again, that, that takes us back to the fact that we have to persevere and not drift from what our safety standards are. Um, keep in mind that the front doors of the church, the parking lot doors, and the windows will be left open during the service in order to provide for fresh air circulation. So please dress appropriately. Okay. Um, your observance of these prevention measures and your patience and your cooperation and support have all been greatly appreciated. Before closing with some scripture, um, I want to encourage all of you to seek out your vaccine opportunities. Um, if I can be assistance with this, please contact me through the church office. So I would like to close with scripture from the third letter of John chapter one, verse two. Dear friends, I pray that you may enjoy good health and that all may go well with you, even as your soul is getting along as well. Thank you for joining. Um, stay safe and remember, take each day and go by the grace of God. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, uh, Pat. Uh, lots of good information. Um, as always, um, you know, the last uh, several months, we did have um, worship in the parking lot for three months and then uh, worship in the fellowship hall. And then uh, for some uh, unfortunate reasons, we had to discontinue the worship in the fellowship hall. And Pat has been um, uh, very, very helpful in providing um, lots of information and guidance. Um, so we do appreciate, and we are really blessed to have uh, such wonderful people like Julie and Pat uh, being part of our faith community. Julie, I have a question. I don't know whether you, um, the question is, uh, Julie, the pandemic has been long. Yes. Is, it, is it realistic to expect the emotional recovery from trauma could also take at least six months to a year? I, th I think that's reasonable. To expect, to expect. I, I like to think about it as, um, you know, let me back up first. I mean, the, part of it is too that the pandemic is still going on. You know, we're, we're anticipating how things will be, um, I, and I don't know how it's going to be decided that that we can be safe again and when we can return to some normality. So I think this is going to be a long process yet where, where we come to that point. Likewise, I, th I think that our recovery will be more like a slope. I, I assume you've heard that that phrase. It is more like a um, you know turning up a dial than than flipping a switch. So I think recovery recovery will happen that way as well. Um, th there's some uh, research on on elements of trauma and how when those are triggered, it can kind of bring us back to perhaps feelings of fear. 
um, feelings of I, I need to isolate again. And I think it takes a while for us to, to learn how to go in the back door and, and quell those and to reassure ourselves that things are okay. But, but I agree, I think it'll take, you know, the questions that I asked are big questions and we're not going to come up with those answers immediately and, and they will be evolving over time. So again, taking that space for contemplation, for talking with friends, for talking as a group, for, for, for spending time with God. Um, yes, yeah, that's the long answer. The, the, the short answer, yes, it, will, it may take a while. It may take a while. I encourage yeah, I think, you to be patient yeah. with yourself. That's right. Be patient with yourself, yeah. Let us, um, let us drink uh, plenty of ounces of patience. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I heard uh, from another uh, source, I think this has come from Wisconsin Council of Churches, that uh, every aspect of uh, our human life and every aspect of our church life it's going to take uh, about 18 months to completely recover from the implications and consequences of uh, this worldwide pandemic. So uh, please keep uh, uh, posting your questions. Uh, good question in the Q&A. Uh, I just, can I, may I add something oh, else? Yeah, please, yeah. please. Um, so, so I'm no longer 20, like, like some of you. I don't know who's out there, but... but but I find that that now when I fall, you know, I don't bounce back up again like I did when I was 20 or six or so. What, what I do when I fall is, is I sit for a little bit and kind of take stock. So that's, that's what I think this period coming out of the, of the pandemic and, and seeing how all these changes are going to evolve will be like, it's, it's like a sitting and taking stock. Eventually we will start we will start moving, you know, as we've done through the pandemic, we keep on doing the things that have been important for us to do. But yeah, that taking stock and figuring this out is going to, is going to be a little bit. Yes. Yeah. Very true. Yeah. Uh, once again, uh, it's a, it's a reminder to all of us, um, especially those who are part of the first United Methodist Church here in West Dallas, uh, please go over the frequently asked questions, the two page document that was prepared by your team and uh, uh, being part of the Methodist messenger that we all have uh, received. And those who are planning to um, sign up and uh, the sign up began yesterday and you have still got plenty of time. You can sign up for two Sundays out of three during Lent and uh, we are not going to have um, uh, in-person worship uh, every Sunday in Lent, uh, three Sundays during the Lent and three Sundays, um, it's going to be live streamed, but all the services um, are going to be live streamed. So please, uh, please go over these uh, talking points or frequently asked questions, the two page document that is part of the Methodist Messenger to learn more about. And this is, um, you know, uh, Pat has uh, highlighted some of them. And uh, so it's a very detailed document and uh, I'm sure that it will be very helpful uh, for all of us. I want to close with um, the scripture that uh, Julie um, referred to Ephesians chapter four um, and uh, share uh, my own thoughts uh, from that text. Uh, this is uh, a familiar text. Uh, I would put it this way, a Pauline wisdom about the body of Christ, uh, the church. Um, I'm going to read um, um, I'm going to read um, verses um, 11, 12 and 13. Ephesians 4, 11, 12, 13. It was he who gave some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, and some to be pastors and teachers to prepare God's people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith 
and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. So the phrase preparing God's people, I have taken from um, this passage. You know, we are all called to be expressing our gifts and graces based on the needs of the church, needs of the community, needs of the nation, needs of the world. But it's all about preparing ourselves all the time, equipping ourselves all the time so that we do the service of God in the best way possible. And um, let me close um, with the thought and then um, an evening prayer from the Upper Room Worship Book. Um, I'm part of at least um, three um, clergy groups, um, Methodist uh, groups, and um, one is um, the Aurora. I'm grateful to the Aurora healthcare system. They have invited um, faith leaders once a month to talk about COVID-19. And there is another ecumenical clergy gathering so almost every uh, week, uh, Wednesday morning, I'm part of uh, a gathering. And in the last uh, few months, maybe three or four months since November, our conversation is all about what are we learning from COVID-19? What are we learning from COVID-19 as pastors so that we can challenge our people in the pews to start thinking about the learned lessons. And this webinar is all about that. I'm glad that Julie and Pat have lifted up some of the ways that we can start focusing on um, these learned lessons from COVID-19. Yes, it is a crisis. Yes, it has caused chaos. Yes, it has affected us in many ways, spiritually, emotionally, mentally, physically. We have lost thousands and hundreds of thousands of people because of COVID-19. And from our own church context, many people tested positive. And uh, we praise God that some have recovered, some are still recovering. And we have lost even one person who tested positive. Um, uh, the, the member died um, a couple of months ago. But I think that is the most important thing as we prepare ourselves. Um, I do have a slide, um, but my slide is not moving. So um, uh, from this clergy gathering, I'm learning how to come out of the crisis at the same time creating a Christ-centered vision for the future. Prayer, what am I learning about prayer because of COVID-19? And every time we come together as pastors, we talk about, um, one pastor said, I used to pray for healing maybe, you know, whenever I, I met a sick person. But now, every prayer, I, I intend to include the word healing. So that's a positive learning. And today morning, we met together as pastors, and I did say, um, I learned to appreciate the presence of God in the absence of the worship in person. I appreciate, I celebrate the presence of God in the absence of the worship in person, the last 50 weeks. So I think this is an opportunity as we prepare as God's people to return to church in person for worship experience. And eventually we will return to whether normal life or new normal life, uh, however it's going to look like. I think we need to start counting the lessons that we have learned. And those lessons could become a kind of foundation for creating a better and a brighter future in Jesus Christ. And uh, another thing I keep hearing, not only from spiritual leaders, but also people like 
Julie um, uh, is a couple of psychologists led a session. They said that this is the time to focus more on resilience, you know, gathering the strength and moving forward with courage. I think that's another way that we can prepare ourselves as God's people to face post COVID-19 church. So um, thanks be to God for these wonderful learning opportunities and let us continue to prepare ourselves. And uh, this is a, a prayer from uh, this book. I don't know whether you can see that, the Upper Room Worship Book. And uh, this is part of uh, Liturgy for the Night Prayer. Uh, we will close our time together uh, with this prayer. Uh, still, you know, even during the prayer time, if you have any question, you, you are welcome to post the question um, to the Q&A uh, box. Let us pray. Dear God, thank you for all that is good for our creation and our humanity. For the stewardship you have given us of this planet earth. For the gifts of life and of one another. For your love, which is unbounded and eternal. You are our companion. You are our guide. And you are our bright evening star. Heal us, O Lord, if we have wounded your love. Heal us, O Lord, if we have stumbled in the darkness. Heal us, O Lord, when we forget that we are your home. Spirit of God, dwell in us. Eternal Spirit, living God, in whom we live and move and have our being. All that we are, have been, and shall be is known to you. To the very secret of our hearts and all that rises to trouble us. Living flame, burn into us. Cleansing wind, blow through us. Fountain of water, well up within us. That we may love and praise in deed and in truth. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Julie, and thank you, Pat, and thank you for all the participants who are uh, with us this evening. And uh, God be with you till we meet again, and uh, blessings of the night. Bye now. Bye. Bye bye. Thank you. We'll, we'll stay in touch, Julie and uh, Pat. Thank right. you. Have a good See evening, ya. Pastor. Yay. Bye. Have a good evening.